Did you ever think you would be playing for Hoch? No. I mean, it wasn't like something that ever occurred to me. But when I heard Julian was going to make a movie about Van Gogh, I was uh, very interested. Immediately? Yeah, because I thought, he's a great filmmaker, he's a great artist, and he's the guy to make this movie. And you're the one to play in it. And how, and how did you become it? How did you become uh, Through painting. Through painting? Mostly, mostly through painting and also the obvious thing of uh, research. I learned much about him uh, because, like a lot of people, I was always a little burdened by this cliché of him as the tortured genius, you know, that cuts off his ear. Punto. <laughs> you know, exclamativo. I mean, that's it, you know? Um, so I, I appreciated him a lot more, and I, he wrote some beautiful things that I felt very close to and very inspired by. What I see, nobody else sees, and sometimes it frightens me. I think I'm losing my mind. But then I say to myself, I'll show what I see to my human brothers who can't see it. It's a privilege. I can give them hope and consolation. You're confusing people. You're confusing yourself with your paintings. I am my paintings. You took painting lessons from Yes, uh, yeah, and they weren't even lessons. As I was with him, he, and we were painting. We were out in nature, and I also got... Uh, t because he, he sold so little um, for dressing, a lot of paintings had to be made. And it was fascinating to see there was a whole team of people making these Van Goghs, you know, for dressing. And uh, one of uh, the people there, uh, Edith Badron, uh, I may not be pronouncing her last name correctly because to me she was Edith, my painting teacher. Uh, she helped a great deal. Uh, but anyway, we, we made these, he made all these copies and then Julian would come in and they were very good copies. And it was always beautiful to watch Julian come in and say, it's dead. And then he'd say, get me some paint. And he'd go and he'd show me and sometimes he'd let me do it. He'd start playing with it. And, and you'd see it come alive. And that was beautiful. I'm telling you, you have to look inside. You keep saying, look inside. I get it, I do. You keep repeating yourself. What do you think I'm doing? I don't invent the picture. I don't need to invent the picture. I find it already in nature. I, I just have to free it. All right, I'm just saying, first think about your surface and how the paint will sit on it. Get control over what you're doing. Maybe you should work inside more. I spent all my life alone in a room. I need to go out and work to forget myself. I want to be out of control. I need to be in a fever state. It's called the act of painting for a reason. All right, calm down. I don't want to calm down. The faster I paint, the better I feel. When I first started painting, one of the first things that he really said, okay, you're on your own, let's see what you do. He wanted me to paint a cypress tree, which was a common, you know, uh, in Ali Champ, there's many. As we were there, and I started to paint, and I was like in a rush to paint a cypress tree. And he would say, no, okay, okay, you're painting a tree, you're making a tree. But he said, look at here. And he'd say, what's going on there? And I'd say, well, I see a little dark spot. He said, well, Let's see the dark spot. He, he, he was telling me, paint what I see. It's like, I recognize that our minds rush to make stuff mean, to uh, reproduce, to copy, to, you know. And then once I started thinking in terms of mark and color and strategy and undoing strategies, um, everything opened up. The way you see things is completely different, you know. In your beard now, I see, you know, Lots I see a little yellow, I see <laughs> some gray, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it was a great practice to uh, train not only literally a way of seeing, but a way of thinking. And, and that falls into so much with what, you know, it's paralleled by his thoughts about his life and, and his, his, you know, kind of nagging spiritual quest and his... Uh, troubles with how to reconcile his desire to serve and to share 
and all the frustrations of his career and his poverty. And it, it was a very dynamic, interesting life and, and goes much beyond, um, you know, the kind of tortured artist cliche that we have. <laughs>